the last lecture we outsourced our action types, there is something else we do a lot as our application grows. And that is use multiple reducers. Now I did say that we only have one reducer with Redux and this is the case. All actions in the end get funneled through one reducer. But Redux, the package, gives us a utility method we can use to combine multiple reducers into one. So that we still follow the pattern of having only one reducer behind the scenes, but for us as a developer that we can split up our code logically so that we don't get one huge reducer. Imagine how this reducer would grow as we add more and more action types we want to handle, but that we can split it up by feature. In our tiny demo application, it might make sense to have a reducer which handles the counter and one which handles the results. Even though they're somehow related, they technically are different or they manage different parts of the app. So splitting it up might make sense. And this is exactly what we're going to do. So let's split our reducer here into two reducers, one for the counter related parts of the switch case statements and one for the results related one. So for that, I'll simply add it here in my store folder. I'll add a new reducers folder and then I'll add a file which I'll name counter.js and one which I'll name result.js. Now I'll copy all the code from my reducer.js file and put it into the counter.js file. I need to adjust the path to my actions file now by simply going up one level and then here we are in the folder where the action.js file lives. The initial state now here in this file no longer needs to know about the results array. It's just about the counter here in the counter.js file. The reducer function still looks as before. State which is assigned the initial state and we receive an action. I just get rid of the result related cases here to make this a bit slimmer. This already is my finished reducer. We can name this here counter reducer this function. We can also leave it named reducer, whatever you like. Now I'm again going to copy the code from the reducer JS file and put it into my results JS file. Again, adjust the path to the actions file. And now I'm going to get rid of the counter property in my initial state. The reducer then still stays as it is, but I remove all counter related cases so that only the store related ones are there. Notice that I still access state counter in here because in the end, the two reducers are going to get merged together into one global state. So there still is going to be a counter state in there. We still might need to update this later, but we'll see. Then I'll still export my reducer here. And this allows me to get rid of my reducer JS file in the store folder. Now, of course, in index.js, I no longer have a valid import here. This reducer doesn't exist. Instead, I now have two reducers. So let's import them. Let's go into the store folder, into the reducers folder and import counter.js. And I'll name this counter reducer here. I'll duplicate the import to then also import the result reducer from the store reducers result a uh, result.js file. Now to combine them, I need to import a helper function from the Redux package. It's called combine reducers. As the name suggests, this is a function which takes a JavaScript object mapping our reducers to different slices of our state as input and merges everything into one state and one reducer for us. So here before creating the store, I'll create a new constant, which I'll name root reducer. The name is up to you though. And I'll call combine reducers. Now, as I just said, this function takes a JavaScript object as an input. And there we now simply can create sections of our app. So to say any name you want, like the counter or just CTR, whatever you want, I'll name it CTR here and map the counter reducer to it. And then I'll add my res area with the result reducer. So now we're telling Redux in the end, hey, I got two different 
feature areas in my application, CTR and res. Please use these reducers for each of them and merge everything together into one store, into one state, into one reducer. If we now pass the root reducer here to create store and save all the files, we shouldn't get an error down there where npm start runs. In the application though, if we reload it, we will get an error that map can't be executed on undefined. And basically here the problem is that stored results, where we map through all these stored results, that this won't work because this props stored results now refers to undefined and not to an array of results anymore. This happens due to us combining reducers. Now we will have one state in the end, but to avoid naming conflicts, Redux adds one level of nesting where it has one state object, but basically with these keys here in combined reducers as properties, which give us access to these substates for these feature areas, you could say. So in the counter JS file, if we want to access the counter, we have to access the global state dot CTR dot counter dot CTR. Since this is the name, we gave this slice of our global state. And for the result, it would be dot res. So here it's state dot res like this. Now, if we save this, the application is not broken anymore. And if I now click a button, it works. The same for storing results though, here we see it adds results, but somehow it's not really adding them. We not really displaying them here. The reason for this is that the stored result actually is undefined because in the result reducer, we do store a snapshot here for state counter and this doesn't work because this now state counter is not known because this local initial state in this reducer doesn't have a counter property. Now you could think that you simply add state CTR counter. If you do this and save everything, click add 10 and click store result, you get an error though that you can't read property counter of undefined. The reason for this is that inside this reducer function, it basically has no access to the global state, only to the state of that reducer function. That's different in the counter component where we connect our React component to the global state. There we can access the different pieces of the state through our slices we set up in index.js. This does not work inside of the reducers. So if we are in a reducer where we need to get a value from the global state, we should simply get it as an action payload. And this is generally how your reducers work anyways most of the time. It's old state plus action plus optionally action data and you return a new state. So here I expect to get, let's say, a result property on my incoming action. And to receive that, I need to adjust my counter JS file. There, where I execute on store result, here I in the end just need to get my result. So I expect to get my result here as an argument. And then I can simply pass this along with the type, use the key you chose to use here action result. So we should have a result property here too in the object we dispatch. We bind or we set the value to the result argument we expect to get here. And now to get it, just like before with deleting, we execute this here on the button as an anonymous function so that we can pass some data here on store result. Should now be this props. CTR gives us access to the counter and that's actually the value we want to store. Now, if we go back and I click add 10, I can store 10 again. And by the way, if you hit store result really fast after each other, you will get this error simply because the ID we assign is the current date. And if you hit this very rapidly, there will simply be the same date assigned twice, which leads to this error. 
It's of course just a temporary ID solution here, not one you would use in production. So for me here, that doesn't matter. The core takeaway is how you can split your reducers into different slices and how you then still make sure you get the data you need in each of these slices.